I would like to talk about so many things, because wherever one goes, Europe, India, Australia or America, one finds more or less the same human problems. Most human beings in the world are so confused and living a contradictory life. They are thoroughly unhappy, utterly miserable and in great deal of sorrow. And one's life seems to be a battlefield from the moment you are born till you die. One finds right through the world division, nationalistic, linguistic, religious differences, one sect opposed to another, one way against another, each saying its way is the best and the only one, and so on. There is division, conflict and war. There is division as the business world, the spiritual world, the religious world, the scientific world, or the professorial college world. Seeing all this division, this utter chaos and great deal of misery, one wonders, and I'm sure you do too, what is one to do? What course of action to be followed? The left, the centre or the right? Or is it a course of action dictated by some ideology, some belief, some authoritarian dictum, or must one follow a course of action that doesn't depend on any authority whatsoever, neither the left, the centre nor the right, no, or any guru, any teacher, any priest, or follow any organised religion, Catholic, Protestant, what you will, but follow one's own inclination, tendency, or follow one's own experience and knowledge, self-reliant, confident and purposeful. There is so much contradiction, not only outwardly, but also inwardly. And what is one to do? And I'm sure you must have asked this question many times. The more serious one is, the more earnest and not seeking entertainment, one must have really deeply asked this question, confronted 
by a world that is so chaotic, contradictory, divided. Knowing very well that one has lost faith, no, having no trust in anybody. No teacher, no professor, no priest or authoritarian utopia. If you are at all serious, and I hope you are at least for this afternoon, you must have not only asked such a question of yourself, but also have found a responding answer to the challenge. What is one to do? Not having faith in another, not be dependent on some saviour, some teacher, some authority, then where are you to look for light, for an understanding? What we are trying to do is to find out for ourselves, confronted with this extraordinary problem of living, with all its contradictions and complexities, what is the course of action which will not be contradictory, which will be whole, complete, which will not produce more agonies, more mischief, more confusion, And to find that out is our problem, and I think that's the only problem in life. An action that is not broken up, that's not contradictory, that is continuous, whole, complete and total, so that it doesn't bring more sorrow, more confusion. And if you will, we will go together into this question. Bearing in mind that the speaker has no authority whatsoever. Because both of us are going to examine observe this phenomenon called life, living, and find out the truth of the matter, if there is an action, a way of living, not at odd moments or in a great crisis, but every day, every minute, a way of living in which there is joy, there is no violence, no brutality, no contradiction, and obviously no imitation and dependency. Unless we find such a way of living, not an abstract idea, a philosophical concept, a theory, but rather an actual 
way of living. Whether there can be an action so complete, so whole, so completely non-contradictory, and I feel Uh, to live that way is the only religious way, none other. We are using the word religion, not in the accepted sense of that word, which is to believe in something. believe in God or no God, or believe in some conceptual ideation. We are using that word, a way of life in which every action is whole, complete and full of ecstasy. Now we are going to go into that. First of all, to understand all this, we must establish right relationship between us, between you and the speaker. He is not teaching you. in the ordinary sense of that word, giving you what to… saying, telling you what to do. The word teach is to give information, to make one understand, to point out, to inform, And one can teach mathematics, give you some info <coughs> scientific information. But here there is no teacher. And I really, and we really mean it. Because each one of us has to be his own teacher and his own disciple. And this is a very serious matter. So that you are listening with a quite a different attitude. You are listening to the speaker, to the words he is using, and using and understanding those words, watching through those words all your own reactions and responses and conditioning. So that you yourself, through your own observation, learn. So the speaker becomes a mirror in which you are observing yourself. So our relationship between you and the speaker is of a basic communication, 
communication being, sharing together, understanding together, working together. That's what the word communication means, to commune. So, seeing all that, <coughs> not as a theory, not something that is extraneous to you, but actually, that's your life. You are daily contradiction, you are daily battle, you are daily irritations, anger, hatred, brutality. And to say, if all that can end, so that we can live a quite a different kind of life, a life that is free, a life that doesn't bring through action misery, a life that is really, completely, totally peaceful. So when I was observing all this, What is one to do, knowing that you are the society, and the society is you, you are the world, and the world is you, which is not just an idea, but a fact. You have created this world by your greed, anger, ambition, competition, violence. Inwardly you are that and outwardly you are wars. You have all these divisions, the black and the white and the pink and the blue and all the rest of it. Prejudice, antagonism, brutality. We know this. Either you know it as an idea, or you know it actually. You know it through a magazine, through a newspaper, or the, somebody has told you. Or you have observed it in yourself. You have seen it in yourself completely. And therefore, there is no need for another to tell you what the world is like. You don't have to read a single newspaper, a magazine, or listen to any talk, if you know for yourself what you are. Realizing what you are, then the question is entirely different. The question what to do. Because one realizes what one is. One is confused, as the world is. One lives in contradiction, in division, as the world is. And without understanding oneself, not only 
at the conscious level, but also very much deeply, very profoundly. Unless there is this understanding, not according to some analyst, Freud, Jung, or your own particular pet analyst, but to understand yourself as you are. And in the understanding of that, the question of what you are to do becomes entirely different. Because now you are putting the question in relation to the world as though it was something outside of you. To what political party you should join, to what group, the pacifists and so on, to what group, to what section. So you are putting the world as something outside of you. But when one realises, not verbally, not as an idea, but actually, when one realises that one is the world, and one's re responsibility to the world is the responsibility of understanding yourself so completely, and then your question, what to do, has a quite a different meaning. So the question is, how to observe how to observe oneself oneself being the total human being you are not an american though you may have the label as the American, and a man coming from India may call himself an Indian with his particular label, with his particular superstitions and beliefs. But when you scratch or push aside all that, he is an ordinary human being like you and me, like a dozen others. So the question is, how do you observe yourself? Because without knowing yourself, who is the world? Not an individual. The word individual means a total entity, indiv indivisible. An individual, an individual means a human being in whom there is no contradiction, no division, no separation, is a total unit, harmonious unit. That is, that word, the individual means that, indivisible. So we are, we are not human beings, you are not individuals, you are all broken up contradictory in yourself. So, how are you to look at yourself? Please do listen to this, it's quite absorbing this. It demands a great deal of intelligence. It's great fun. 
much more fun than any book. than any religious entertainment, than any philosophy. As we are broken up human beings in our souls, contradicting, contradictory desires feeling inferior or superior, being afraid, having no love, feeling lonely, fragmented, not only superficially but deeply. How are you to observe one fragment Observe the rest of the fragments. One becoming the censor, the examiner, the observer, watching over the rest of the fragments. And what gives him the authority over the other fragments? So the question is, who is the observer? And what, who is the censor? that says, this I will do, this I won't do. This is right and this is wrong. This path I will take and I won't tread that path. I'll be a pacifist with regard to this war, but I have other favourite wars. I will follow this leader and not that leader. I believe in this and not in that. I will hold this prejudice and reject that. Knowing, if you have observed yourself, that you are a fragmented human being, And therefore, being fragmented, contradictory, living in constant conflict, and knowing this conflict, one fragment of this many, many fragments takes charge, becomes the authority, the censor, and his observation must inevitably be contradictory. Right? I hope you are following all this. If one fragment, one part of you, assumes the authority of the analyzer, over the other fragments, why has he assumed that authority? And can he, one fragment, analyze the rest of the other fragments? You're following all the sea? How dreadfully complex it has all become! whether you are analysed by a professional or you analyse yourself, it is still the same pattern. 
So it's very important to find out how to observe. How to observe all these many contradictions which make up our, of our life. How to observe the whole of those fragments <coughs> without another fragment taking place. But it's very important to find out because as long as there is contradiction, division in oneself, there must be conflict, there must be violence, which expresses itself in the world, outside, in society. And as long as this fragmentation exists within one, There can be no peace on a man who really deeply wants to understand and live a peaceful life, a life of love, must understand this question completely. Therefore it's a very serious matter, not just an afternoon's listening to a few words. We are dealing with the whole problem of existence. And it's only the mind that can give serious attention to this, that is able to resolve it. So it's very important, imperative, that one understand this question. How do you observe? Do you observe yourself as an outsider, as a censor, saying this is right, this is wrong, justifying, condemning, approving, storing up? And if you do, there is a contradiction and therefore conflict, and therefore violence. How do you observe? Do you observe through an image? When you observe, a tree, do you observe with knowledge of that tree? The knowledge that separates you from the tree, divides you, brings about a, a space between you and the tree? How do you observe? How do you observe your wife and your husband, or your girl or boy? How do you observe them? Watch yourself, sir. Please do it as we are talking. Don't make notes. Don't fiddle around with tape recorder. But watch it. How do you look at another? Don't you look at another through the image you have built about the other? The image that you have been building for many years or perhaps two days. The, the image becomes the observer. Right? Are you following this? So 
to the image or through the image you look. So the sensor, the observer, is one of the fragments and that sensor has an image of what is right and what is wrong, what should be done, what should not be done, because he is still functioning as a fragment. So the question from this arises whether one can observe not without any fragment. To see you, see oneself, see the world without fragmentation at all. And what brings about fragmentation? Not only in oneself, but also in the world of which one is. What brings it about? Why, are, why is one fragmented? Why are there contradictory desires? Right? <coughs> now, why is one violent? Which is part of contradiction. There are many causes why human beings are violent. lack of physical space, human beings who have evolved from the animal and the animals are very aggressive, and people love being aggressive. Feeling inferior, and they want to be superior, and so on. There are many causes, and most of us spend our time discussing the causes, explaining the causes, each professor, each specialist, each writer, according to his conditioning, explains the causes. Volumes are written why human beings are violent. But at the end of the volume, human beings still remain violent. So, the description is not the described and therefore no, is of very little value. You know why you are violent? Very well. You haven't got to spend years trying to find out the cause of your violence, which is such a waste of time. But to observe violence as it is, without the censor, who then separates himself from the fact that he is violent. Are we meeting each other? Are we communicating with each other? I'm 
not so. Look, sirs, this is really very important to understand. So let's go into a little more. Let's suppose I am violent. Anger, jealousy, brutality, driving ambition that brings about competition. And I'm always measuring myself against somebody else. And this comparison makes me feel I'm inferior to you who are superior. So there is a battle. Violence. I know all that. Then I say to myself, I must get rid of this. I, I want to live at peace. Though I have lived for thousands and thousands of years as a human being, there must be a change. There must be change in society. How rotten it is, and it is. So I will plunge into social work and therefore just forget myself. And the social work and the society is me. So I'm escaping my, from myself and realizing all the tricks the mind plays upon itself. I, now I look at myself, I'm violent. And how do I look on my on that violence, as a, a censor who condemns violence or justifies violence, or one who is not capable of dealing with that violence, therefore escapes from it? How do I, how do I look at myself, look at that violence? Please do it. Are you looking at it as an observer who is different from violence? The observer who is separate, who condemns, justifies, and says, this is right, this is... And so the observer looks at the violence, separates himself from violence and condemns it. Or is the observer the observed? The following? The observer recognizes violence and separates himself in order to do something about it. But this separation is, for, is one of the tricks of thought. So the observer is the observed, is the violence. So long as there is a division between the observer and the observed, there must be violence. Right? So when I realize that, not verbally, realize with my heart, with my mind, with my whole being, then what takes place? You understand my question? You 
know, when you observe anything, there is always not only a physical separation, distance, space, there is also the desire to identify yourself with that which is beautiful, noble, and not identify yourself with that which is not. So identification is part of the trick. Of a mind that has separated itself as the sensor and is now trying to identify. But whereas when the observer becomes aware that he is part of the observed, and he is, and therefore no image between the observer and the observed, then you will find <coughs> that conflict completely comes to an end. This is real meditation, this is not just a trick. Therefore, it's very important, imperative, that one understand oneself deeply, understand all the responses, the conditioning, the various temperaments, char characteristics, tendencies, just to watch without the observer. You get, we are meeting now to observe without the observer. And that is the act of learning. And so that's the act, that is the action. Now, there is a, a difficulty in this. One is observing oneself. One wants to learn about oneself. The more you discover, the more you understand, the greater the freedom. I'm using the word more purposely for the moment. The more is the comparative evaluation. I want to understand myself, learn about myself. In observing myself, please do this as your as speaker is going into it. Do it actually. Don't take it home and think about it. Do it now. Not this is not a group therapy or a confession or all that nonsense. Hmm? But watch yourself as we are working together. I want to learn about myself. And myself is a living movement. Each desire contradicts the other. They're living, moving, they're vital. And I observe. And through all that observation I've learned. With what I have learned, I am going to look next minute. Right? You follow this? <coughs> I am going to look, observe, with the knowledge 
which I have gathered through previous observation. Am I learn? Is there learning then? Because when I, when the mind observes with an accumulated knowledge of its examination, from its examination, that knowledge is preventing perception. That knowledge is preventing the freedom to look, see the difficulty. So can the mind observe without accumulate? And the accumulation is the observer, is the sensor, is the conditioned entity. Therefore, to look without accumulating, that is, sir, uh, look, someone flatters you, says how nice you are, how beautiful you are, how very intelligent. Or how stupid you are. Now, can you listen to what he is saying that you are stupid or very clever or very this or very that? Can you listen without accumulation? That is, without accumulating the insult. <coughs> or the flattery. Because if you listen with accumulation, then he becomes your enemy or your friend. Therefore, that listening and how you listen creates the image. Right? And that image separates. And that image is the cause of conflict. The image that you have about the communist and the bourgeois. The image you have about the Catholic, if you are a person. And the Catholic has the, the image about the person, the image you have about your husband or your wife or your boy or whatever it is. You believe and another does not believe, so there is contradiction. So can you observe without separation. Can you observe at the moment of violence, at the moment of your anger, without the sensor? See how, How difficult it becomes if you are not aware at that moment. If you are not aware at that moment, you have already created the image. So to observe the cloud, the beauty of it, the light of it, to observe the lovely hills in this country, 
to observe the light on the water, just to observe without naming it. Because that the naming, the knowledge, the experience prevents you from, prevents the mind from observing totally. So when the mind can look, without the observer, all fragments come to an end in oneself. And this is really very important to grasp, to understand. And this cannot be taught by another. 